for the temple. Our choices, uh, listen, offers a, a life of, uh, listen, uh, one choice offers a life of peace. One offers a life of purpose. One offers a life of hope. One offers, are you getting this? Uh, of, of being comforted. One offers a life of being encouraged. One offers a, a, but the other leads to a life of self-centeredness and emptiness. Old Testament, um, in Deuteronomy, says, I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Uh, what would you choose? Life. Choose life in order that you may live. Jesus said, I came to bring life. Right? I came to bring you life and to bring you life more abundantly, more than you could ever imagine. Did you know God's purpose for you is, is, is greater than you could ever even think of, you could ever imagine? You can accomplish much more when you stop thinking in the natural, when you start thinking of limitations. I, I remember a few years ago, and I got, I've got the book here somewhere, and it's called The Consolation of Limitation. Let me tell you what happens as you get older. And if you haven't gotten here yet, shame on you, uh, if, you're, if you're older. You find you can't do things on your own anymore, and you and you should be mature and grown up enough to say, help, I need a little help over here. Yeah. That's yeah. hard to do. It, it is. And the reason it's hard to do is because you're still in your flesh. And I think, I just want to give you my thought on this because it was like, wait, I had this thought before, but it means something different now. Why? Probably because I'm a little bit older than when I first had this thought. Maybe some of you will get this. So when I was 30, I had this thought. But now that I'm over, um, you know, I'm 61. That makes me over 60. Now that I'm there and I've got some things, um, when, back when I was 30, uh, mountains, you know, I could bench press a mountain or at least a few. Today, I'm lucky. To, I, I'm just glad to get out of bed. <laughs> Come on. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I have to ask for help. And my wife is so willing to help me, she just gives me a little push. <laughs> I love that woman. <laughs> then I have to get up off the floor, but the my point is, is that when we mature, we realize that we do need, we absolutely were designed to need each other. And get this, God created the heavens and the earth, amen? Amen. Now, what he did is he created a habitation, a place for us to live, right? Now, we don't need these bodies except to live here, and we don't need this place except for these bodies. One day, we don't have to have these bodies no more. But until then, we need these bodies, amen? amen? We need this place in which we live. And so what happens is that we exist and we serve in two kingdoms. I get this, but, they're, but they're, are, they are separated and how we serve in this world should be the same as we would serve in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, our Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wait a second. Earth and heaven? Both. Two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. We, we serve in two kingdoms. But when it comes to us, we are the we are the are to be the loyal, the royal subjects of one king and one king alone. Somebody say his name. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. He is Jesus, the Son of God. He's he's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's who we should be looking to serve. And how do we do it? Well, we we learn that each and every one of us will serve in different capacities. If we were in the army, you broke rank during during wartime. What would happen? Probably be shot. He'd probably be shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that's how it is in the Lord's army. I don't think it is. I'm kind of glad it's not because once in a while I have been known to break ranks. Amen? But there is a consequence. Somebody say, uh-oh. Yeah. But here we are again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, no one can serve two masters. Either he'll hate one and he'll love the other, or he'll be devoted to one, he'll despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man and God and money. You can't serve this. But I will say this. You can serve in the spirit and in the natural and still be loyal to the one king. You can do it. You see, how do you know that? I got one answer for you. It's one name. Anybody want to guess that name? Jesus. Jesus. Well, Everybody knows that, don't they? Apparently not. 
See, Jesus came to prove that it could be done. Hello? He came to prove it can be done. And he said, listen, this is my desire. His closest disciples, his friends, his family, his desire for them and everybody afar off is that they would be one even as he was one with his father. So during this time of being in the Lord's army, being that we live here, but we have a home there, we are sojourners is a word that's used quite often. We're just passing through. This is our temporary home. You know, you know the song I sing. Sometimes I feel like I'm just moving around with my head up in the cloud. I'm steady moving, but I'm not gaining ground. Moving the wrong way with the crowd. That I remember I'm not part of this world. I'm moving higher each day. You know, you're not moving higher if you're not growing in the Lord. You're not moving higher if you're not maturing in your knowledge and your faith and your loyalty to the kingdom principles. Somebody say amen. Amen. Some of us, you came and you came to the foot of the cross. Praise the Lord, you made it there. But that's where you have sat and that's where you intend to die is just at the foot of the cross, never having done anything else except that I believe in Jesus. And you came to church and you said, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I... Here's what you say, though, really. Not maybe with your mouth, but with your actions. I freely gave, I gave them all I'm going to give him. Now, believing in Jesus ain't that enough. Wait a minute. Who are you serving? Are you living the life that he wants you to live? How many right now think that God wants, wants you to have a better life than you got right now? Now, when we recognize that, realizing there's going to be more responsibility, but here's the thing. He will never, oh, I love this. He will never put on you more than you can handle without providing two things. Either A, a way of escape, or B, he'll give you strength for the journey. Come on now. Somebody should get happy in here besides me. I got up this morning and. And, and I, was, I was thinking about all oh, what has to go on today. And, and I was, I was just saying this. I was mourning over the fact that there are things that can't happen and aren't happening. But I was so glad when I, I heard people uh, doing certain things. Families were getting together. And, and someone called me and said, Pastor, are you going to play taps today? I mean, what do you mean today? Well, how about Monday? Would you play taps? Would I play taps on Monday? You know, I think I should just take up that invitation. Go down there and see who shows up. Maybe preach a little while right there, right there at the cemetery and pull out my horn and play taps. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How many believe in the resurrection? Maybe I should play Revelate. <laughs> well, glory. There's a thought. See how we get up. All I can say if I do that and they get up, I'm going down. <laughs> Can I get a witness? I'm going to have probably a lot of witnesses. I can see enough. Wake up, Pastor. It's going to be okay. This, this, was, this was foretold that they would come in. The graves would burst open. Yeah, but I didn't know I was going to be one playing the trumpet. Here's the thing. When you're in the Lord's army, or when you're in any army, when you're on the battlefield, you can't be caught in this thing where you can't make up your mind which way to go or what to do. Did you know that a soldier, when he's out there fighting the battle, he will be well trained? Did you know that someone who's going to run this race called, listen, run this race of salvation, you're going to run that you're going to win. You're going to be well trained. You're going to exercise. You're going to be ready because when it, listen, when that roll is called up yonder, I don't want to have to Jesus saying, I, I can see it now. He's up there with my grandkids, my grandma, uh, my wife, and they're looking at Jesus looking and said, where is he? Well, he didn't train. It's his heel, but he'll be along any minute now. No, I want to be right. How do you want to make that race? Amen. You want to run across that finish line. You want to be able to finish your race. And i got a message coming here that maybe even tonight. I don't know. Because uh, I'm going to preach about Paul. I'm going to preach about Solomon. How many of you know that Paul ran his race? Amen. And if you're going to run this race, you're going to have to run it. You ain't going to find it. Listen, back, <laughs> back there in the cot. Back there in the barracks. That doesn't mean you shouldn't spend time in the barracks. How many of you know we need to rest from time to time? But there's a reason you rest. It's so you can get up and go train and fight some more. Amen? Amen. 
You can't be caught between two opinions. You can't be stuck in the valley of indecision. Well, I'm not really sure what to do. Oh my goodness, number one thing I hear from Christians today, I have to say Lord Casey, because if they, why, wait, wait. No, I get it though. I'm not really sure what I should do. You know what needs to happen? We need to learn how to start making disciples. Amen. We need to learn how to, are you getting this? this is, I'm not teaching you anything. I haven't taught since I've been in ministry, since, since I've been here. You can't sit in the valley, not just of decision, but of indecision. You can't be halted between two opinions. Either serve the Lord, James chapter 1, verse 6. I'm going to give you this, this, this transliterated uh, reading of this. The person who vacillates between faith and unbelief is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that individual be su supposing that he will receive anything from the Lord. Did you hear what he's saying? Don't let them suppose they're going to receive anything from the Lord. If, well, I'm in, I'm out. I'm, I'm on board. I, 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 I jump on board. I'm, I, I'm, I'm put me here, put me there. Send me in, coach. But no, comes time to get sent in. You want to sit on the bench or stay home. Watch this. Do not let that person suppose. Don't let them believe that they're going to receive anything from the Lord. Look, listen, being a dubious, undecided person, vacillating in all their ways. In other words, being double-minded. There are two kingdoms, one king. Two kingdoms, one king. We have heaven, we have earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your name is holy. You are holy. Lord, you called us to be holy. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, actually, I, I, I guess I'll clarify this. There's no such thing as indecision. Indecision is a, is a decision that's already made. See, actually, if you've already made the choice, you've either made the choice by design or by default. And have you ever heard this? It, it's kind of um, um, financial, um, financial peace. Dave Ramsey, he talks about this with how we handle our money. Either you decide what to do with your money and where it's going to go, or someone will decide for you. You see, what, Pastor, where did this money thing come from? Hold on. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Some of us, that's the only thing we understand. That sometimes it's the only thing that we recognize is when we see this, this green currency, or if you're of another country, it might be prettier than this. Just saying. But you know what's interesting about all this? Some of us forget what it says on the back of this dollar bill. Here. On this bill it says, the United States of America, in God we trust. And all of that's over top of the U.S. Capitol. How many right now want to pray that that would happen? Amen. That God, listen, that God would overshadow, that God would, would be the overtone in everything that's, that's taken place and all the decisions, decision making that's going on, that God would be all in all as we preached last week and we've been teaching. Christ, listen, listen, he wants to be all in all because that's how it's supposed to be. It's all God or it's no God. You can't be in the valley of indecision and be truly serving God. You've got two consequences when, you, when you, you don't make a choice to serve Him. Number one, eternal life leading to heaven or eternal life leading to hell. I read something somewhere, and I can't remember how it was put, but it talked about the, the difference between what the believer, a, 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 a loyal believer and follower of Jesus does when they go to heaven and how they live their lives and when someone who's not served the Lord and how they're going to live their lives in shame and torment for eternity. 
You see, all that was made up. That's man-made. Well, it was made up by any man. It was made up by Jesus then. But I don't think that's the case. Not according to Scripture. You know, in making decisions of a spiritual nature, the battlefield is no longer the intellect. It becomes the will. It's no, it, we're not trying to fight, well, you know what, I'm smart, you're dumb. And sometimes that's how we act uh, with people, but no, wait, we're not to lord over people. Matter, as a matter of fact, well, we're so, uh, are you ready for this? Did you know we're supposed to encourage people, to admonish people? To, we, what, wait, we are to do what Jesus did, condescend. The Son of God left heaven. But did heaven ever leave him? Seriously? No. Did his father ever really forsake him? No. But did Jesus ever feel like he had been forsaken? Like he'd been left up, left out alone, perhaps, hang, as we would say, hang to hang out to dry. You see, Jesus suffered all these things. He suffered all these feelings and all this anguish. And it certainly wasn't for lack of believing in his Father who was in heaven. At the end of it all, what does he say at the end of it all? Into your hands. I commend my spirit. It's interesting that Jesus is making his final, his final deposit in the throne room of heaven, in the spirit. But what's wonderful about all this, we see that because of his, his deposit into heaven, in the spirit, we see that there's a withdrawal from the tomb. Let that simmer for a moment. You didn't hear that. Jesus made a deposit in heaven. So that there could be a withdrawal from a tomb. See, it's no longer, we can say with Paul, it's no longer I that live, but it's him who lives in me. Amen? Amen. And the reason I can make that statement, the reason I can make that claim is because somebody already paid the price for me. Amen. Someone paid the price. And to him, there's all glory and honor and power. And praise, give up, and let Jesus take over, give up, give up. and let Jesus take over, give up, give up. and let Jesus take over. made a way for me. He made a way for you. Now if you've got burdens that are hard to bear and if there's a load that you could share, kneel down. Kneel down. Talk to Jesus. <laughs> because I know he cares and he'll make a way You know, at Christmas, he made a way in a manger. Remember the song, Christmas time? Yeah. You just have to picture the whole thing from, from, listen, from the time of conception to birth to the living to the suffering to the dying to the, to the burial to the resurrection to the ascension. Jesus all along the way was paved. Listen, he was paving a way. He was paving a way for us. I suppose maybe that's why they call it the way. And Jesus is the way. Would you stand with me? And uh, for those of those who are curious, uh, the ushers will be at the back door to receive the offering today. And I want to listen. I want to uh, say this, and uh, I am so grateful to those who have been faithful. Uh, some have made sacrifice during this time. Even some who were unable to be with us and. Watch this, in the flesh, in, in the natural. 
And they still contributed by sending in their, they were faithful with their offerings. And uh, what's really been cool about all that too is I have received more prayer through this time from those people than I had ever when they were here. But I'm looking forward to the day when everybody once again is here where we can truly, listen, I, I don't have a problem laying hands on somebody, but, <laughs> but when we can truly hug each other, we can truly be a family, turn your name and say, let's be a family. Amen. 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 Father, today we give you thanks, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for what this holiday weekend is about. Lord, it's not, a, again, it's not just a Hallmark weekend. It's not just a day where we get to have a long weekend and take time off. But we will do some of that, and Lord. The reason we can do that is because we do have such liberty, such freedom. But Lord, I. I so want for you to receive the glory and honor that you're due. So, Lord, let the, the moments and the hours of this day and, and, Lord, other days, every other day following this, Lord, Lord let, let it reverberate with sounds of, your, of our singing, of our praises. Let us sing, melody, making melody in our hearts, singing hymns and songs and spirit song making making praises unto you Lord that you would receive all these and that God would be a sweet savior mm -hmm. some of us Lord as you well know will be singing while we're still yet suffering yet we're still going to praise you we're still going to sing as, as the song says we'll praise you in the storm Lord let us have that kind of confidence that kind of strength as we, as we receive power from the Holy Spirit, and Lord, as we share our faith together. Even as we share a meal together today, Lord, we give you thanks. Because you have given us that liberty and that, the ability to enjoy life together. With you and with others. Lord, let us make the choice today to serve God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. And Lord, to love him the same way. We give this all honor and glory and praise and attention in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Sister Linda, would you pray? Yes. First, I want to share something. Come on. 